tonight's video recap. We hope you enjoy everything that we're bringing to you tonight. I'm joined by Hannah Klepp, who was in the uh, eventing warm-up session with Ingrid this morning, riding her horse, uh, Regal Waldemar. Uh, what was that like for you to be firstly selected um, for the clinic and then to participate in, in such a big atmosphere? Being selected was, I think, everyone's dream to get to ride with the best rider in the world or the best event rider in the world. Um, because she's so talented in the eventing and the dressage, we got to go through what well, not what she would def what she thinks is a great warm up. So we started really nice and slow, um, which was good for my horse because he was very tense, very excited to be in such a big atmosphere. But it was a really good experience for both him and I. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we don't often get um, opportunities to come into um, big presences, big atmospheres with our horses, and I, I think you handled it incredibly well. Um, Ingrid's a very calming presence in the arena, would you say? She's um, her advice, her her tone, everything just makes you feel a little more settled. What were, um, I guess, some of the, the main things that you took away from today? Maybe some light bulb moments or things that you'd like to use at home? Well, l last night she talked about how building the partnership with the horse is really important. And Sam and I have only been together eight months, so we're still working each other out. And he's very quirky, sensitive. And basically building that partnership will help progress and she wanted us to she wanted me to trust him and give him the rein and learn to do it himself so by giving him the rein saying there you go go over the cavalettis and work it out yourself that's me putting trust in him and then him putting trust in me so yeah building that partnership together was a bit of a light bulb moment Absolutely, and, but it takes, building a partnership takes time and trust takes time um, and I think that's so special that on a, on a night like or you know a morning like this um, in a big atmosphere you had some moments there where he did trust you and that's wonderful to see that only after eight months that's already happening. Um, obviously Ingrid's uh, a jumping rider by background, um, obviously a, a dressage rider now um, is also a specialty. Um, did you feel that there were some dressage elements that she was bringing into the, the jump work that you, or the pole work that you were doing with her? Yeah, definitely. She wants the horse to be soft and supple right through all three phases, which is really important in the jumping because now we're aiming to finish on the dressage score. The horse has got to be on the aids, mm -hmm. show jumping and eventing. And that's how she gets such fast cross country rounds because the horse is constantly on the aids, constantly listening to her and of course trusting her. And she's also smashed out a great dressage score at the start as well, which always helps. So, helps. absolutely. <laughs> I'm joined by Georgina Tivendale, who uh, was part of the eventing short course masterclass with Ingrid today. Um, your horse is Star Allure, and um, you are also on the Young Rider Squad, uh, the Victorian Young Rider Squad for eventing, which is fantastic. So, and I think you might be our youngest participant here today in the masterclass. So that's a fantastic <laughs> achievement to um, to have been selected. So congratulations. Um, big jumps out there today. Um, from a dressage riding perspective, I was a bit overwhelmed, but you seem to take them in with perfect strides and, and no problems at all. Was um, it lovely having Ingrid there, looking at you, guiding you through the course today, and giving you some tips? Yeah, it was a really great experience to be out there with one of the world's best um, helping me and yeah, I really enjoyed the whole experience. Yeah, that's right. You looked like you had a smile on your face uh, at a number of points around the course, which was lovely. Um, Ingrid's obviously uh, more accolades and awards than we can even name. Um, I've been struck by how down to earth she is and um, her advice is so, um, it's, it's so easy to understand and so easy to implement. Um, did you find that today? There are some things that you can take home with you that she um, provided advice on today? Yeah, I definitely um, took away a lot of things through that lesson. Um, and especially like the bridging of the reins mm. and um, being like long with the reins and getting the horse to do its own thing. Um, I think having her there really implemented that and help, will help me hopefully in the future to improve. 
Yeah, she's a real calming influence, isn't she? I, I've certainly found that with the stresses going on in the indoor and, you know, maybe some stresses out there today, she's just a lovely presence to have in the corner. Um, so uh, I think it's fantastic we've been able to have her here and to, to get her insights. Um, I guess, uh, that apart from the bridging of the reins, was there anything else that you maybe have tried for the first time today or was it more just getting some reassurance on your training techniques and, and some confidence in what you're doing? Yeah, um, so most of the things I have been working on, but especially like um, her giving the advice of putting stirrups up another hole um, to help uh, push my heels down and get a better seat for jumping was um, like something that I can work on as well and um, having them understand to do their own thing um, and yeah, I yeah. really... No, that's lovely. And I, I hope that you were inspired today with Ingrid, as, as we all were watching you. And um, it's a wonderful combination, you and your lovely horse, and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much. We're joined here with Mickey Bray, who had the uh, the opportunity to ride on her young horse, um, Ellen Bray Benito Gold, yeah. Benito Gold, Benito Gold um, yeah. with Ingrid uh, in the first session today. Um, what was that like for you? It was so exciting. Um, yeah, ever since I heard about this being an opportunity, it was something that I dreamed of and couldn't imagine that the time would come when I could actually ride in front of Ingrid and get to hear firsthand from her. So it was it was amazing. And um, you've had uh, Benny since he was quite a young horse, haven't you? A, a few yeah, months old. Yeah. So this is a real beautiful partnership that you've been able to develop with him. And you said you've just started competing him? Yeah, so we bought Ben as a foal. Um, I've done all the work with him up until now and we've been to two competitions together. So tonight was a really big ask. I wasn't expecting him to be an angel, but he really put on his best behaviour and had, yeah, had a great time. That's lovely and I think the fact that you've developed that partnership with him over the last three or four years it really really was evident in the arena today, just a lovely harmonious working relationship together, it was gorgeous. Um, did you, uh, is there any sort of key takeouts that you had from, from what Ingrid was telling you? I know that you particularly referenced the horse stretching down and, and chewing into the buckle, so do you just want to elaborate on that? Yeah, absolutely. So Ingrid really made it a point of having the horse feeling as though they were chewing the rein down and out of your hand 
which I really liked as a reminder to keep them over the back and thinking forward and down. I also liked how she had a big emphasis on stretching, but then also in that working time, it was about getting those quicker transitions, which Ben can be a little bit uh, chilled out with, <laughs> especially um, after having the big atmosphere, he was feeling a little bit tired. So it was great to have that contrast of stretching down and forward, but also bringing him back up and being quite quick yes. off those hind legs too. Yeah. And her uh, jumping influence, um, that was obviously brought into your session today over the Cavalettis. Um, do you think you'll be taking some of those um, Cavaletti exercises home with you? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely the exercises and hopefully some Cavalettis home too. <laughs> yeah, I think for me and for Ben, it's really helpful to keep him between both legs, both reins, keeping him straight. And the way the poles have the white in the middle really helped me to focus on keeping him central and yeah, really going to the bridle. So really helpful. Fantastic. Lily Connolly, you um, had the opportunity to ride in the young horse uh, session this morning um, with Ingrid, um, working with your horse Silanero. Now I believe that you purchased uh, your, it was then Philly, as a, a young horse, as a foal, and you've done everything with her to date, including breaking her in. So it must have been quite an opportunity to have her here in this big atmosphere, um, experiencing a masterclass for the first time. Yeah, that's right. So actually my auntie bred the horse, so she's been with us ever since um, and yeah to bring her over and to work with her to break her in was really awesome and then today to finally bring her out for the first time and expose her to this kind of atmosphere was really awesome I think that she handled it very well and I couldn't be more happier with the horse to be honest. And, uh, in the session that you had with Ingrid today there was some um, starting work with Cavaletti so have you done much of that Cavaletti work with, um, with your horse before this or was this the first time? Uh, well, once I found out I got into the Ingrid Masterclass, yeah, I really cranked up the Cavaletti work. Um, so, yeah, I was tried to be as prepared as I can, but obviously she's very young, has only been broken in for six months now. So I did try to keep it easy and stuff with her, but I really enjoyed the session today and I will definitely take away the exercises that Ingrid gave us today and continue working with them. Fantastic. Were there any surprises? Anything that was um, a, a bit different to hear or um, advice that you've never heard before with, with uh, coaches and trainers to date? Uh, no, not really. I definitely know that I need to keep the horse more forward and she's got that quite active hind leg so I think that she's going forward but really get going and stuff like that. But yeah, I was really happy with the advice that Ingrid gave and she has really set me up for the future really with this horse and I'm excited to get out and compete some more now and yep. yeah. I'm joined by Charlie Welsh and she was in one of the young horse sessions today with Ingrid riding her stallion uh, Dante Quando. Uh, he's a super impressive stallion, real presence in that arena and you rode him very very well it was a it was a big atmosphere hit yeah. for him to come into and I think you you absolutely you know showed off his beautiful qualities while handling some tricky tricky moments um, with Ingrid as your guide um, just some thoughts on uh, what you took away from your session with Ingrid today um, I really took away just how to manage a horse in an environment like that and such a young horse mm. and also a stallion who has extra quirks on top of that and yeah, she really helped me manage that. And by the end, he was just doing super work over the Cavaletti. Is that um, sort of work that you've been practicing at home or is it all brand new? Um, yes, yeah, so I have been practicing that at home since um, I found out that I got into the Ingrid Masterclass. But before that, he hadn't really done much in the way of jumping except for his free jumping at the stallion mm. licensing. So he thought it was a great idea to just launch over the <laughs> poles. That's right. Yes, he certainly had scope, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. No, that's, uh, but it was wonderful and just great to see that beautiful floating action yeah. that he had. Uh, yeah. The people that were sitting around me were certainly ooing and ahhing, <laughs> so you've, you've done a great job. I'm joined by Clarissa Bentley-Bell, uh, who rode her beautiful young mare Sugarloaf Fifi in um, one of the classes today with Ingrid. It was the young, one of the young horse yeah, sessions, it was wasn't it? Yeah, young horse session. Yes, yeah. that's right. And um, 
So talk us through, I mean, you obviously applied um, for this. You were selected based on your lovely application and um, the, the work that you've done so far in training your mayor. But did you find that today's session um, built on some of the um, the starting blocks that you'd already put in place for your, for your mayor and you were able to get some ex ex things that you could take further? Yeah. yeah, definitely. It was so much fun. I didn't want to leave the arena. But yeah, I've been training Cavalities for probably or oh, eight months now. And I find for me and Fifi, they're just a mental and physical aspect for us. Like it keeps my mind active and her mind active. She can be a bit sensitive and spooky at times. So I find the Cavalities give us both what we need to be focusing on, not what's outside the arena and what Boogie Monster <laughs> might jump out of there. Uh, so yeah, today was really cool to be able to do that in such a big environment as well. And to be able to canter over them and all that, I thought, and she actually still stayed with me. At times I was like, I'm gonna probably jump all four in a second. <laughs> but she was, yeah, it was, she was so good. Out there she was a bit tense and then I thought, okay, what's gonna happen when I come in? And the minute she came in, she was like, okay, I came on the job. So yeah, she was really good. Oh, look, you, you could really see the development um, in, the, in the time that you were working yeah. with Ingrid, just the suppleness that you were yeah. achieving, the bend, the fact that she was so responsive to your transitions and your aids. Um, did you find um, that was Ingrid's, uh, that was her techniques and her guiding you through that and just, you know, having someone with such experience working with Cavalettis and jumping, helping yeah. you in dressage? Yeah, definitely. And she's such a, um, like, calming person. And because you've got the headphones and you're really just listening to her, it feels like it's just you and her in the arena, like the crowd's not even there. And yet yeah, to feel, yeah, the way she changed, like she's so compact that she tends to tighten her body a lot. So to use the bending and the exercise to really make her loose, like by the end, she was so around my leg and I could have felt like I could have done anything on her. <laughs> and she was just having a ball, which that's what I love about her. She just has so much fun. Yeah. And Oh, you could definitely see that. You could yeah. see that you were having fun. You could see that the horse was relaxed and, yeah. and just having a super time, yeah. um, which is a real credit to you. <laughs> no, no, it was, and it was a big atmosphere and you handled it really well. Uh, was there anything in particular that you wanted to get out of the session or I guess something completely new that, ha that came as a light bulb moment for you? I think it was just more the experience. Like I'm only, I'm an AOR rider. I don't do this as a job. So to be able to ride with Ingrid, <laughs> like the world's best rider, to have that experience under my belt yep. and have her guidance and her reassurance that I'm on the right track and I'm doing what I should be doing. Um, that was, yeah, really overwhelming in a way, but yeah, really reassuring that I am on the right track. Oh, definitely. I, I can imagine that would be yeah. just a massive uh, personal life goal yeah, there that you've my ticked. position is something I've been working on. I've always had a natural good position, but in the last two years, it's something I've been really focusing on, working my physio on that. So for her to be like, your position's perfect, it was just like, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> she just, she just Write that down, <laughs> laminate it, yeah. stick it on your fridge. You've, you've nailed it. The T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. I'm joined by Greer Maloney, who rode her beautiful mare Florence in uh, one of the sessions today with Ingrid. It was um, focusing on, on horses that I guess were sort of elementary, medium level, but I've just been told that your horse actually only arrived in the country six weeks ago, and yet you were able to take her out to a show like this and um, demonstrate her beautifully. So firstly, congratulations on that. Um, I guess, how was it working with Ingrid? Uh, it was really amazing. I think everyone has so far said Ingrid has a very calming effect um, and you can definitely feel that when she's talking to you and helping you with the horse. When the horse makes a mistake, it's not really a big deal. Uh, she brings confidence a lot, not only to the rider, but also to the horse. Absolutely. So a six week old partnership that you have with this horse, you're already showing um, a lot of harmony together and she's obviously trusting you already a lot, which is wonderful. Um, some of the tips that you've taken out of today, um, I guess if you could just go through those and also what you'd like to then, how you'd like to implement them at home in your own training. So I think uh, obviously today we showed the changes, which I think can be a real gremlin for a lot of people. It's a bit of a stumbling block. Uh, the horse Florence, she uh, already had a little problem with the changes already. So to have Ingrid work on uh, the setup and how to prepare the horse better for that was super helpful. Um, and I think we'll definitely be going home and, and training that exercise over and over. And I think that's the other thing that Ingrid tells us a lot and reinforces is that it's about repetition for the horses. So repeating it, mistake is okay, repeat, and when it's good, reward, pat, rest. Absolutely, making that quick mental transition, being a thinking rider um, and, and looking for the cues and responding to them exactly. Um, she's obviously a superstar uh, jumping rider as well as a, dressing, a dressage rider. Did you um, feel that some of that jumping experience and expertise was coming through in her advice today? 
Yeah, I think, the, I think the big advantage of being a jumping rider that's turned into a dressage rider is you're a little bit more free in the way that you will push the horse forward or come back and just a little bit more always thinking outside the square. I think when you're just a dressage rider, we can become a little bit trapped in the four walls of the arena and a little bit more contained. So I think uh, just the variation that Ingrid brings to it is really unique. Absolutely, and she's just such a lovely presence in the arena too, isn't she? I know, you just want to, can't we keep her? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, do you do some Cavaletti work? Have you done some already with your mare uh, or, you know, with other horses? Is that something that's in your routine already? Um, and obviously there'll be some new grids and patterns that you might be looking to implement from today. Yeah, um, obviously, uh, as you know, Florence is very new, so uh, she's had one go of the Cavalettis before, so super happy with how she went with that today. Um, but we do do that with the other horses that we have at home. We try to do Cavalettis maybe once a week or at least once a fortnight. Um, but I think after today we'll probably implement that a little bit more. I like the idea of um, having the Cavalettis in the arena all the time. I think that's a really uh, a handy tip to have, and that way you can be doing dressage, pop over the Cavalettis, refresh, start again um, and I think it keeps it interesting for the horse as well. Absolutely, keeping them uh, mentally fresh, looking forward to the work, um, I think that's so important. I'm joined by Nikki Kirby, um, who was in one of the uh, the classes today with Ingrid Klimka, which was very special and you were on a horse, um, Almania Felix, just um, tell me a little bit about that horse. Well, Felix I bought as a yearling and I actually didn't really like him much but anyway <laughs> by the time he got to be a three-year-old and was broken in like you know, the plan was to sell him on um, the broker said he was quite talented and I you know had some video footage of him and he was and so we sent him we ended up sending him on to Elliot Patterson who who was the plan was to do the young horse with him and then potentially sell him so in the process uh, Alexis and Elliot both said you know, Nikki, I think this horse is going to be perfect for you. So he, we didn't sell him. And he, so he's done the, both the, all the four, five and six year old mm. classes here, uh, dressed up with the stars and been in the top four finals. So, you know, coming here for this was, you know, it was actually our first outing. Mm. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow, that's quite a big one to start off with. I know, but I, I was comforted by the fact that he's been here in this atmosphere, you know, before, and we have a really good relationship. So, you know, it's it's not a competition atmosphere. I love Ingrid. She's my hero forever. So, you know, I just felt that that was, wow, what a good opportunity. So I, you know, was absolutely blown away by, um, you know, having the opportunity to come. It's very sad for Judy and... Um, but, you know that she was selected and couldn't couldn't make it. Uh, look, I uh, I know, but these things unfortunately do happen in the horse world. But it was wonderful that you were able to step in and um, and showcase your horse so beautifully. Um, Ingrid's obviously uh, got well too many accolades to, to mention. Uh, she's got the jumping background, which I think influences the dressage and vice versa. Did you think today in the dressage session, could you feel some of the jumping elements maybe um, that she was using in training techniques? Yes, um, and it was lovely last night um, hearing her talk about her appreciation for horse people broadly and wasn't necessarily dressage or jumping, that she actually, you know, is ha looks outside the box for other other opportunities and and any horsemanship that's really good she you know looks to see can she incorporate it in her system which is fantastic so yeah <coughs> as far as the the jumping incorporated in dressage fantastic you know um all the opportunities to engage the hind end using the cavalettis you know m make it more active get the lift get the balance talking about the balance was fantastic again watching her you know with the inventing class was super mm. you know the sit before the jump super you know so i mean yeah i'll be reading her book like a bible now because i have bedtime reading yeah. <laughs> confidence to actually go forward and yes. you know having had a little bit of insight because it's it's you know it's not something that you know cantering through cavalities i can't wait for the next mm. section to see how that goes because it's sort of a bit daunting but I have absolute belief in what she's yes. talking about. Well that's right it's, it's tried and tested with her isn't it and I think um, all of the horses that we've seen today have, have, have greatly improved by the end of her sessions they've all been more supple they're bending they're lifting their legs they're engaging through the hind end there's 
Yeah, there's a reason that's happening. Yeah. Um, and just having her in your corner, having her support you in the arena, it must be pretty incredible. You don't, I mean, I, you don't even notice the crowd. No. It's like, you know, she, you're, you feel like you're at one with her and you absolutely have confidence that she's going to look after you. And I felt that all along. So, you know, it, was, it wasn't a daunting exercise to go in there this no. evening at all. No, that's, yeah, that's wonderful. It's so great that you've had that experience. Um, so, beginning of the, the competition year, 2020, um, what are your thoughts? What, have you got things in the diary that you're working towards? Well, after this experience, I just feel like the world's my oyster. With my that's phone. fantastic. <laughs> Robbie, well, it's been a huge day here uh, with Ingrid at Dressage Masterclass 2020. Um, you rode your beautiful horse, uh, Silmarillion, Silmarillion E, Subby, as he's known at home. Uh, and you've had a, a lovely partnership with him over a number of years now. And I know 2019 in particular was a very successful year for you in the competition field. You were national advanced champion. Um, you're on the, the New South Wales squad with him. Um, he's a very beautiful, special horse, which, uh, and I know Ingrid was delighted to see you ride him tonight. Um, I guess just a couple of words on, on Subby and your partnership with him to date. Um, so Subby I've ridden for two years. Um, he actually, my husband and I got him in training three years ago and Dave rode him first. Um, and then his owner, Corinne Watkins, um, actually moved to Hong Kong and Dave at the time was um, down at Willinga Park um, working down there. So yeah, I stole the ride, which I was very excited about. Um, and yes, he is a very, very special horse and um, I've been very lucky. He's had a very successful year um, doing the advance work. Um, yeah, and, and just I've been working pretty hard with him and Ingrid was sort of like the icing on the cake for the moment. It was, you know, pretty awesome to work with her tonight with him. So. It's not bad stepping up into Priest and George with Ingrid, is yeah. it? As your, you know, as your coach for the evening, uh, and and the work looks really solid and and really natural to him. So I'm sure it won't be a, a stretch at all for him to to you know have a fantastic small tour year ahead. Um, I guess Ingrid uh, obviously has a very very strong jumping background, and um, were you noticing some of the techniques that she uses in her jumping career being used tonight in your session? Yeah, certainly. Um, we didn't do so much Cavaletti work, but um, certainly throughout the master class, I took. We watched a bit earlier, and some of the gymnasticizing exercises that she used and the, and the Cavalettis were were really really good. So, certainly for warm up as well. I think for and even for an advanced horse, I will definitely be taking some of that home, mm. and um, and using it to to warm up and just to keep the horse a bit fresh as well. I think that's what she was really trying to portray is you know, keep them happy and fresh and, and um, a bit of cross-training sound. So, um, no, throughout the evening there were a lot of very helpful exercises for sure, yeah. <laughs> Anything in particular that really jumped out at you in your session? Any nuggets that you're going to be using back home at McKinnon Sport Horses? Oh, God, um, where do I start? <laughs> um, certainly accuracy, like, um, yeah, she was very specific about that. And, of course, we, we know that, but you tend to get a bit you know, relaxed and a bit slap happy about it, I guess. Um, for me, um, the horse tends to sometimes roll over in the neck a little bit, so riding him a lot more from my seat up into the reins. Um, and just the exercises, like different exercises to keep the horse happy, not put too much pressure on them, but, you know, expect the work. So the different exercises that between me and, and Campbell, we both um, had a lot of different exercises to take home so I was actually having my walk breaks sort of watching very intently trying to learn yeah. from him as well so um, yeah there, there was a number of things yeah I think uh, we learned so much from the whole day from the young horses through to the medium horses small tour medium tour big tour here at the end there's there's just so much to absorb and I'm, I'm certainly going to be watching the footage back to um, to to really let it sink in Thank you for watching tonight's video recap with Equestrian Life. We'll see you next time.